after coaching thousands of athletes and getting some of them to run 4.4 in the 40 yard and 10.2 in the 100 meter, I think it's really important to break down some of the fastest athletes in the world. And today we're gonna break down Noah Lyle's workout to see what makes him so fast so you can learn and improve your training. All right, getting right into the warm up. Um, the first thing that we're gonna see is that he's doing a lot of rotation and lateral work. This is to really get his T-spine moving and that's really important for having very good movement. Right here, he's doing stuff that's gonna activate his glutes and even like a little bit of his hip flexor and kind of like the gait cycle of sprinting. Um, when you're sprinting upright, you do see this movement a lot. This right here, a fire hydrant, is very simple. It's just for your glutes, improving your glute, um, you know, activation, strength. It's good early on, it's really good for warm up. This is to unlock your ankle mobility. Um, this is actually really, really key for getting better ankle mobility. A lot of people have a really stuck like um, like a knot in front of their ankle. A lot of that you need for um, you need like a like a personal like a like a PT like the people who specialize in ankles. But you can also do that little band exercise earlier. I think is really good. This is also to unlock his metatarsals on his ankle. The better your ankle is activated, the more stiffer you will be when you sprint. So this is a really good workout. You need somebody to do it for you, and you, they need to know what they're doing too, or nothing's really gonna happen. But yeah, this is a drill, simple, just marching. I have this on my Instagram. I think it's good for learning like the basic motor skills, but don't get fooled. It's not gonna make you fast. You need to still sprint, but this is good just to get like the right movement pattern. And when you hit the right proper angles, you know, it'll help. And then he puts some speed to it. This is a little more transferable as the A run. So it's really slow, but you put some momentum to it. So you actually have to challenge yourself to hit the positions that he's hitting. This is a low dribble. So it teaches you how to use your foot and propel off the ground. Um, sorry if I'm really moving really, really fast through this. This is just a hurdle drill. So this is just for a hurdle, kind of like your hip flexors and internal rotation, external rotation. It's really key for producing a lot of force, being able to turn your knees in and turn your knees out and do all that with your legs. Some are better than others. I never really understood this drill. I think it's just for like timing and rhythm. Like I know that's not what people say it is, but it doesn't like open your hips. It just really turns on your hip flexors and you have to do a lot of timing. So I don't know, I think it's a little bit overrated, but I mean, it's not bad exercise. It's still good for, you know, getting your hips up, getting your knees up, getting, you know, your hip flexors activated, all that good stuff. So yeah, and it's, it's a good timing exercise. So definitely not wrong at all. Nothing too bad about it. This next one, um, accelerations. So this looks like a like a like a flying ten, so I don't know why they titled it accelerations, but or why no Lyles titled it. But pretty much you build up for like ten meters and then you kind of do like a little sprint out. Here he did a max effort acceleration, so this is really key. Um, I'm not sure if they're timing it yet, but he has cones and he's practicing his blocks and he's you know trying to get better at the block start. But this is the key of the workout: racing people. The reason why no allows is fast and why Olympic sprinters are fast is because they train with other fast people consistently. Your ability to race other fast people, challenge yourself at 100%, time yourself, do whatever it takes to make you run at your absolute 100% multiple times is only going to make you 10 times better. I see too many people doing these block starts where they're by themselves. They have nobody there. They're working on their technique, but they're not challenging themselves. So look how hard all those guys are running. Look how how they're all utilizing max muscle fibers, 100% intensity, max intent. And they're all running the fastest they probably would, even if it was like a meet. This is meet speed. This is how you would run at a meet. So if you don't run at meet speed at practice, guess what? You're gonna run slow at the meet. 80 meter flies. So pretty much he's building up for about 30 to 40 meters and then running as fast as he can for 30 meters. I know it says 80 meters, but you can't do an 80 meter fly. It's, you have to build up, then hit max speed and then decelerate for 10 to 20 meters. So he's probably hitting it right now is when he goes max speed and then he stops right there and he decelerates for another 20 meters. That creates an entire 80 meters, but you're not sprinting for 80 meters max effort. See again, he builds up slowly. This is really good for your max velocity sprint speed. So your ability to chase down people. What is No Lao's best trait is his ability to chase down, his ability to hit that max velocity and maintain it. This drill is perfect for doing that. The next thing I wanna get into is some weight room work. See what sprinters are really doing in the weight room. I think too many people think that these sprinters are just doing a bunch of heavy deep squats and deadlifts that are all max effort, one rep maxes, and that's not really what makes people faster. So let's see what No Lyles does in the weight room. Okay, so we're skipping um, the entire warm up just because he pretty much did the exact same warm up as the uh, track workout. So we're gonna, just gonna get straight into like the meat and potatoes of his workout, you know, the good stuff. I don't need to watch the same workout again. 
He's gonna start off with just basic barbell hand cleans. So what hand cleans do is they kind of teach you how to produce force in a very small range of motion. So you're in a counter moving position, which is kind of like a quarter squat, or you can do full range of motion like we just did right there where you went all the way down, but then you have to power through the triple extension and then actually catch the bar, which teaches you how to put on the brakes. And people might say like, is that important for sprinting? It is because eccentric rate of force development is really important for utilizing your elastic energy. And when you sprint, you utilize a lot of elastic energy um, from the tendons and you know a lot of your stretch shortening cycle. So being able to catch the weight at a very high velocity is really important. Now, would I do hand cleans as like the best exercise to improve like eccentric rate of force development? I wouldn't. I would do squats where you know, you're know you dropping as fast as possible, stuff like that, where it's like eccentric squats. You drop as fast, 0.1 seconds, and pop out. But um, in the old school literature, the old school science, you know, hand clings were really, really important, and this was like the, 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 old, the good way to do it back then. I wouldn't do it now, but hey, there's nothing wrong with still doing it, it's just old school. It's just old school. A lot of top, top trainers, I'm talking like top 1% coaches in the world, coaching all the NBA trainers, coaching all the top athletes, aren't doing as much hand cling and Olympic lift work just because it's so hard to teach the catch and the eccentric portion. But like I said, he was in that quarter squat position and he caught it in the quarter squat position at very, very fast. So it was a lot of weight and breaking forces he had to put on, which is really important for your sprint speed. Sorry if that was a little bit of tangent, but I'm kind of just, you know, um, taking care of the whole thing. And then this part, I don't know why they do this as a cool down. This is, I think, a glute ham raise. It's really good for teaching your glutes how to fire correctly and some co-contraction work. And this can be really good for acceleration sprint speed. So even though it's a cool down, it's kind of like a burnout, um, it still has a lot of benefits for your sprint speed. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. If you guys want to see me break down more athletes and how they train and what their workouts look like, comment down below which athlete I should do next. And you should watch this video right here. Have a good one.